maybe graphic. So if you have children, um, if you have sensitive ears, or we used to say we got virgin ears, um, this video might not be for you. What am I talking about in this video? I am talking about HIV states or certain places saying, oh, the HIV has sort of uh, has gone high or people are getting it are getting it again. It's not just gay men. Now it's uh, so I want to talk about that right quick and throw in my little two cents, my five cents, my 25 cents. If this is not for you, you know that deal. Go get you some snacks. Come on back. You can make your own video. It's fun. It's exciting. It's a trillion videos on YouTube. So, hey, without further ado, let's get on with this. So, this is from um, medicaljustice.com uh, by Jeffrey Siegel, MD, JD, July the 10th, 2017. Uh, HIV, positive man charged with murder after mistress dies from AIDS. And I don't know if this is that same, yeah, I think this is that same case. So here's two stories, and I'm not gonna read the whole thing, I will try to throw some videos in. Uh, Robert Murdoch, M-U-R-D-O-C-K, was charged with murder in Ohio for not telling his mistress, Kimberly Klim Klimpner, he was HIV positive. The indictment alleges that Murdoch knew he was HIV, but failed to tell his mistress the indictment continued. They had unprotected, you know what, MG went during their five-year relationship. Clipner Klim died from AIDS. Okay. Uh, a police report stated that after Murdoch's wife learned of the affair, she told Clipner her husband was HIV. Are y'all listening? Are you listening? Are you listening? A police report stated that after Murdoch's wife learned of the affair, she told Klimpner, okay, she told the woman, Kimberly, her husband was HIV positive. That must have been an awkward conversation. Murdoch was also charged with felonious, felonious assault. Wow. So you thinking you doing something with that married woman's husband and you just helped her take out the trash that she didn't want to be bothered with. I don't know if it, I wonder if she had it. I'll try to get more information. Uh, here there. An accused killer now held on half a million dollars bond tonight after allegedly infecting his girlfriend with HIV, which prosecutors say led to her death. Now public health officials are stressing the importance of testing. NBC 24's Jim Nelson is live outside the Toledo Lucas County Health Department. Jim, it sounds like this case has sparked a lot of conversation. Yeah, there is no doubt about that, both in the legal and health care communities. All of this as Murdoch faced a judge for the first time today. For Kimberly Klempner's son, Josh, keeping calm can be difficult. Uh, I keep telling myself it's not worth any kind of outburst or anything like that. Um, his time will come. He is Ronald Murdoch, charged with murder and felony assault after allegedly having unprotected sex with and infecting his girlfriend, Klempner, with HIV. She died earlier this year. Judge Stacy Cook set Murdoch's bond at one and a half million dollars. He was scheduled to be formally arraigned, though defense requested that be postponed. It is a case that Toledo Lucas County Health Department officials say is igniting conversation. You can pass it on to your partner or partners and that you need to have a conversation with your partner saying that, you know, I am positive and we need to take precautions and this is what we can do. Health Commissioner Eric Skojinski adds that getting tested for HIV can often be the difference in life and death. With the drugs that we have, you know, we are seeing people live, uh, live out their lies, if you would. So a chance prosecutors say was never afforded to Kimberly Klempner. It's not the first victim. It probably won't be the last if he's out on the streets. And unless he or someone else can come up with that bond money, he will not be on the streets during these court proceedings. Murdoch's arraignment has been rescheduled for next Tuesday. Reporting live. Going on to another story, Orlando Batista 
was indicted for felonious assault. So, hey, this is not just, you know, they say, oh, it's just just African people get. It, it just black people get. It just gay people. You got white, you got Hispanic people get, and you got white men as well as Hispanic men carrying this daily disease that's incurable that the people die a horrible, horrific death some come to who are having affairs, cheating on their wives, girlfriends, maybe picking up prostitutes, maybe doing drugs or injecting, maybe they might be down low. And they don't give a hill of beans about these women. They just want to get their uh, sexual urges gratified. They don't care nothing about you, your body, you being a mother, you having kids, you having an elderly mother or parents that you got to take care of. That's why anybody that's engaging in uh, S.E., you know what getting jiggy with, especially if you, it's, it's not with your husband or wife, you need to get tested before you do the do, before you do the wild thing, before you get jiggy with it, before you do bump and grind. You need to get tested. And if y'all don't get tested together, we're not having no sex. you just going to have to go play with yourself, get your little can, a little empty can, and do your little thing and leave me the heck alone. That's why I said it. Okay, so let's get Mr. to Ms. Batista. Okay, so here, uh, uh, Mr. Batista, for having S.E. with his girlfriend without telling her he was HIV, he admitted in court to having infected at least two other women, one of whom passed the virus to her child. Batista was convicted and sentenced to eight years in prison. He appealed stand that the, the law requiring him to disclose his HIV status violated his rights to equal protection and free speech. Excuse me? His lawyer argued before the Ohio Supreme Court. I wouldn't have argued for nothing. There's no doubt that Mr. Batista's behavior in this case were reprehensible, but this case is bigger than him. This case is about all HIV positive people in Ohio. It's about the burden that is passed on to his victims that requires them for the rest of their lives to disclose their HIV status to potential sexual partners. When your lawyer is arguing your behavior is reprehensible, that's a hint that you have an uphill battle. The National Center for HIV Law and Policy argued that unfairly singling out people HIV for draconian punishment, but not people with more prevalent diseases like HPV or hepatitis constitutes unfair discrimination. You can't, you can't die from that. And first of all, um, uh, and, uh, you shouldn't even be out here doing the do with somebody. If you're doing the do, you need to be doing the do with somebody that's got your same status. Being like a, a vampire, you know, infecting people, biting people, and turning them into um, uh, hidden <laughs> vampires. I know that's the right word. I know y'all gonna get me. Uh, it's not right. It's not fair. Okay, so here they say, as of 2015, 59 Ohio residents were convicted of HIV-related prosecutions over the prior decade. Each state varies in how it criminalizes transmission of HIV. More than 30 states have prosecuted individuals. That's a doctor from Lafayette. And all these people that I see, and I'm not being messy, I'm just keeping it real, are men. Men, black men, white men. So long, did you know this? Not to disclose your HIV status to your sex partner, but a local man is challenging that law. Well, in a story you'll see here on that on your side first, Lisa Smith has the new challenge, which if it's successful, could make it to the U.S. Supreme Court. Orlando Batista doesn't get out of prison until 2022 for felonious assault. He didn't tell his sex partner he's HIV positive. His defense attorneys are challenging the Ohio law, appearing before the Ohio Supreme Court in May. We challenged it on from two fronts that it violated the First Amendment 
and it violated uh, equal protection of the laws. They lost the appeal in a unanimous decision, but appellate attorneys Josh Thompson and Demetra Stamatakis are hoping for one more chance before the U.S. Supreme Court. It's a national issue. I think over 30 states have these types of laws. The reason we say that's unconstitutional is because it's about what you have to say. Constitutional law professor Ken Katkin disagrees with a free speech argument. Transmitting HIV to somebody um, involuntarily and without their knowledge um, is really wrongful conduct that has nothing to do with speech. Whether the U.S. Supreme Court even takes the case is debatable. It could all come down to whether the lower courts are split on the issue. An issue like this where it probably could come up in a bunch of different states and a bunch of different courts, that makes it more likely that they would wait until there's an actual disagreement between courts before they would take it. It could take six months to a year before the Supreme Court decides if it will hear the case. Lisa Smith, nine on your side. 2021, July 2021 from New York Post, Florida man who hit HIV status from Gail Pales, sentenced to prison. So he has several women. I can't look at him and tell if he's gay or down low, if he's a crackhead or drug head. He just looks like a regular looking you know, white guy, you can't even go on people's mannerisms thinking that, oh, they all, you know, act a certain way if they down low or gay. So he had gal pals. That means he had more than one woman. Uh, so here, uh, at least two of the women were diagnosed with HIV after dating the man. Gentry Burns, 27, of Port Orange, pleaded no contest Thursday to, to one count of uninformed HIV infected sexual intercourse. The two other counts of the same felony were charged were dropped. Burns, who was arrested after an ex-girlfriend contacted authorities, was also sentenced to 12 months of probation. 26-year-old Gentry Burns is accused of infecting women with HIV without telling them he's tested positive for the disease. Western News spoke with one of Burns' ex-girlfriends who says she's hoped for this day for years. Gentry scares me. He terrifies me. I think about it every day. Um, and I just want what's best for my son. Burns is the biological father of Allison Barker's son. The two went out during their years at Spruce Creek High School in Port Orange. She believes she is one of the only women to have a relationship with Burns and not contract HIV. Allison says Burns physically attacked her in 2011 and she broke up with him. Later, she spoke with another ex-girlfriend who said they both tested positive and Burns was lying about it to other women. They decided to act. We got to stop him because he's, he's mentally messing up all of these women and he's telling them that he doesn't have it and he does have it. Allison tells us she has spent the last few years talking to Burns' partners and trying to convince them to tell law enforcement. You have to accept that you have this disease now and... It's, it's emotional. I mean, I broke down and cried with a lot of these women. On Thursday, the Volusia County Sheriff's Office announced Burns will face three charges of failing to inform sexual partners about an HIV infection. Deputies believe other women could be infected and have not come forward. The Sheriff's Office says Gentry Burns was already in the Volusia County Jail for an unrelated case. With these new charges, he's being held here on no bond. In Volusia County, Chris Guardaro, WESH 2 News. Now, Allison says that she... Detectives later learned that Burns, who was diagnosed with the virus in 2014, had sex with three women without telling them his status. One was later diagnosed in 2017 after dating Burns a year earlier. It is believed that Gentry Burns traveled extensively along the East Coast of the United States and may have contacted additional victims in other states. 21 states, including Florida, have laws requiring people with HIV who are aware of their status to tell their sex partners. Let's break this down right quick, and I don't even need to look this up because I already know. It's less difficult, less likely for a woman to give it to a man. Man gives it to the woman, okay? So uh, he would have to uh, have had a lot of relations with this woman to get it while a man could have relations with a woman one time and giving it to her got all these men uh out here uh passing this on to
to these women. Here's another one in Missouri. This is a Hispanic guy. Um, heavy set guy. You can't look at a person and say, oh, he got it. She got it. Again, as I said, I work for the state. I work in different other places. I know where I work. I had customers coming in. Heavy set. Uh, big, thick, overweight, obese. Clear skin, pretty skin, pretty hair, thick hair. It was their real hair. You can't look at a person and say, oh, okay, they, they, they got it. You, you don't know by looking at a person. That's why y'all got to go in and get the health test. You can't go on, oh, she just 19 for these older guys that's chasing after these little youngins. Oh, she just 21. She just 23. She, she did 19. She, she fresh. It's it, nothing. You don't know. You, you don't know. Okay. <clears throat> Missouri man may have been... I haven't even seen this story one time on the news. This is from 20, oh, no, 2013. I wasn't doing YouTube. I really wasn't following these stories. Missouri man may have infected over 300 with HIV. Harry said, this man, a guy. Public health concern in the Mid South. Police in Southeast Missouri say more people are coming forward with concerns of being exposed to HIV. Investigators say this man, David Mangum, admitted having hundreds of partners, 50 to 60 in Stoddard County. He's been charged with reckless exposure to HIV infection. Doctors say some people won't know whether they have the virus for months or even years. Depending on their immune systems, people can transmit HIV through intimate relationships and contact with blood. Doctors say all of Magnum's partners should be tested and assure all of the tests are highly confidential. And that's not something that even uh, an attorney can usually get a hold of without um, going through a lot of hoops and a lot of red tape. And so all of these individuals that had contact with this man are going to have to be tested and maybe even tested again. Police say Mangum told them he has been HIV positive since 2003 and has had 300 partners since then. Alleged victim 28 identified in the complaint as DB said that he tested positive for HIV in July of this year and according to a probable cause everyday file in Stower County. Magum was arraigned today but did not enter a plea. A preliminary hearing was set for September the 26th. Bond was set by Steve, Judge Stephen Mitchell at $250,000. And another thing, when they send these guys to jail or prison, they should all be in the same thing with each other. Stop putting guys that have life sentences or are supposed to get out in six months or a year with these long haulers and stop putting them in, 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 in cells with dudes or in the same area with dudes or with people that have this. It's not fair to those those people. Okay, so here Magna could face a life sentence if convicted. A public defender appointed to Magna's case did not immediately return calls. I'd really like to know what, what happened. So they're saying here, uh, here, our concern is for public health. Any individual who may have come in contact with this man or through a Craigslist, if you met a man in Stour County and engaged in getting jiggy with it, we urge you to get tested and cease all uh, getting jiggy with it activity. Better safe than sorry. Okay, so here they go on. Magnum and his former boyfriend met via a men seeking men ad on Craigslist in 2012 and engaged in unprotected, ooh, ooh. I'm just gonna say O-R and A-N, getting jiggy with it, according to the complaint. The two moved in together on November the 9th, 2012. So y'all met in October and moved in November 9th, not even quite 30 days. But the relationship ended in June when DB discovered that Magnum had been cheating on him. This guy is a male HO, and you know what that is. The victim also told police 
that a former female roommate of Magnum had disclosed to her that he had been HIV positive since 2003 and that, that he has had over 300 sectional partners since he tested positive. Okay. Let's go. Let let's let's take this in slowly. Let's take oh this in slowly. Oh my no, let's, god. Let's go back. The victim also told police that a former female roommate of Magnum had disclosed to her that he had been HIV positive since 2003 and that he has had over 300 partners. So he tell he told her that and I'm trying to figure out what is a female. Well, how could you be this guy's roommate? Okay, so here um the police interviewed him on August the 26th, during which he waived each of his rights and admitted to having unprotected sex with the victim without disclosing. Okay, Magna also admitted to police that he had over 300 partners since testing in 2003 and that between 50 and 60 were in Stoward County. When asked why he did not disclose his HIV status to his partners, Magna said fear of rejection. Um, you guys, we've got some uh, weird, serious, um, crazy, narcissistic, narcissistic, um, hateful uh, people out here who don't give a ook um, about you, your life, your family, your kids. They only care about getting jiggy or getting busy with it. Um, he said, first of all, it's like if you have a cold or you have COVID, you should stay in. You shouldn't go out. You shouldn't be coughing in people's faces. You should be covering up. You should um, wait until your, um, I know with the HIV, it'll never be over, but you shouldn't even be out there breathing, hoovering, or touching stuff. Uh, I got a mouth to say. I don't, I just don't know how to say it in the appropriate way because my thought is why are you still out here getting jiggy with it and why so many partners it looked like he was purposely trying to infect people he purposely trying to infect this is demonic you don't give an ish about nobody but yourself about his um, urges and I don't even think it's about that. He just don't give a care. He mad at the world and he's going to get back. And the, all these states, everybody should, and I hate that. Everybody should have one rule, one rule, one law on how to deal with this. And I knew this was going to happen when I first wrote an article about this uh, almost 30 years ago. I knew this was going to happen because we, we don't have any kind of way to contain this. And everybody... Uh, it's not, it's kind of like when you're in traffic, I don't know you can compare it to in traffic and you know, you're trying to let somebody uh, get a cut or whatever. They don't say thank you or, or you in line, uh, or, or you got somebody coughing all over, uh, and everybody is, is not going to behave and follow the rules. Okay.